Hello and welcome to a very pleasant day here in England um, in May, still during lockdown. Now this headlight shell which actually came off my uh, Norton 99 as it turned out was the wrong one as I think I've explained in the previous video whereby the ammeter on this headlight shell here in the middle and the correct positioning should be here to the side <coughs> also um, the problem I had was if I used the combined ignition and light switch then there was not enough room for them both to fit in here so I've acquired um, a another headlight shell from uh, a chap called Rob who runs a custom shop and he had one of these and clearly these are a generic Lucas type shell now all the hole positions appear to be exactly correct as they should be um, this is where the combined switch should go there's a medallion Lucas medallion that goes into this slot the ammeter and the um, speedo goes into this hole here now um, just looking at this headlight shell that I've bought it was beautifully uh, prepared so it's been shot blast or grit blasted or something and painted with a protective coating um, and I was just going through the stages of filling all the pit marks up um, with the body filler and preparing it for paint and I thought mm, I'll just have a check and see that everything fits perfectly before I do that with all the components. The first thing I noticed was that here on the headlight shell that I've acquired, these actually have encapsulated nuts. Uh, now this one on this side um, is a Whitworth and on this side it wasn't a Whitworth so I'm going to have to uh, get my Whitworth nut um, that does fit this bolt, the headlight bolt and cut it down to fit into that encapsulated bit there now on the old headlight shell and on other Norton headlight shells that I've seen the genuine ones if you like or the ones that fit these um, nuts are actually welded on the inside and certainly um, if you ever look at uh, my my tie or mighty garage on YouTube he's doing a Manx and his is definitely uh, welded on because it popped off while he was looking at it but this is encapsulated but nonetheless this is the one I've got to go with because it fits all my components but it doesn't fit all my components so I've got a little bit of metal work to do the actual combined switch um, for the ignition and the light doesn't fit into this hole it's got a square here um, I guess to keep it in the orientation of whatever switch was on this headlight shell in the right position so that's going to have to be eased open a little bit and also which surprises me is that the speedometer uh, sorry that was my other headlight rolling off there uh, this speedometer won't go into that hole it is really tight it may just be a case of um, it just needs slightly easing because it does fit nice and easily into that one um, this headlight shell which I've got, which after some uh, more investigation may be off a panther, possibly an aerial, um, had a flat edge on this hole here where I'm going to put my combined uh, ignition and light switch and I've just made it a bit round, just taken the square edge off of this burring piece here on this drill and now I'm going to use um, a hole saw, one of these that I've got um, I've got to be very careful that I don't over enlarge the hole so I'm just going to measure the actual switch see how big a hole I need which is 20 millimeters and 20 millimeters on there is looks like that one all the way through so I'll do that one first and if that is just slightly too small I've always got the bigger one I can continue with um, I'm using this drill type rather than the electric drill because it gives me a torque setting um, I don't want to rag this too much so I'll get on cutting that and uh, we'll see how that works <coughs> Okay, that's gone through. What I shall do now is clean that up with some uh, 
cloth and get these burrs off, maybe just get a little file onto it and hopefully my switch will now fit and yes it does, perfect, excellent ok so that's another little job done yeah as I thought actually uh, in retrospect why would this hole be a different size on different uh, headlight shells I've just literally taken the thickness of the paint down um, and that appears to have given enough clearance for the speedo to fit in perfectly okay so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to continue to take a, a little bit more metal with this and then um, it'll allow for the paint when that goes back on so that's a result good after all that I uh, <laughs> resorted to my old faithful electric drill um, this is from 1981 Wolf Cub 2000 when Wolf decided to try and get back into the DIY market after they left um, they tried to come back with this and decided again not to bother and I was working for a company called Brown Brothers and uh, I saw these at £10 each just to uh, on clearance so at our branch I bought all of them and we sold them within about five days but I bought myself one as well it's 10 quid seen a lot of action it's an aluminium body so you can actually nip it in the vise quite well uh, it's a big heavy thing and it still runs great you just don't get quality like that and I use it to uh, just take a little bit more metal off that and it's worked great just thought uh, you might be interested in my old uh, drill well now I've got everything ready uh, to go for the preparing this headlight shell for painting um, it was either sandblasted or dipped um, from the previous owner who's then put a, a coating on it to protect it for the refinishing there's quite a few little um, bits and pieces where you had pitting in it and I've filled them up and a few little dings that I've sorted out with body filler so I've been using these uh, sanding discs actually off uh, my mini um, sander I've used 80 to get most of the body filler down then a 120 and finally the 400 so the next stage is to use some panel wipe which you can get from your local auto paint supplier you can get all the crud off it and keep it super clean ready for painting it gets all the dust and the body filler and everything away um, so now that that's ready for paint what I'm going to do is use these rattle cans I know people don't like rattle cans I don't not a huge fan but these ones are actually filled with exactly the same paint that you would buy as a paint for your spray gun um, I need this guy local to us he puts them in a premium aerosol the actual fan pattern from the uh, aerosols is very good I've got the etching primer because I've gone through to bare metal uh, just here um, if you can see a perfect example of I don't know if I can show you that if it's close enough you can still see a bit round there where it's sort of pitted so I missed that so I'll probably give that a bit of a fill as well and recut that hole so I've got that bit to do with some more filler but I shall spray it with a, another primer that highlights any of the low points and then I can do a bit more body uh, filler in those uh, spots or maybe even some silicon or cellulose putty rather and um, then that'll be getting ready for the final paint which I'll say so we'll use the rattle can for that so I'll just clean it again with the um, panel wipe and then start spraying. I used to work in the uh, automotive trade as a supplier and at our branch we did uh, automotive paints, the old cellulose uh, paints and fillers and what have you. And we used to do demo days and it was amazing how people don't follow the instructions, particularly with things like body fillers and the rattle cans. It states quite clearly that you should do it for at least two minutes uh, before you start painting and that's when the, the ball starts rattling. Same with the body filler, when it says mix thoroughly for two minutes. We used to time people on the demos with new products and invariably they only got to about a minute, minute ten and then they wondered why they were getting holes in the filler. Anyway, um, 
if you do follow the instructions you get much better results just a just a thought because we used to see it all the time the other thing I've noticed about this headlight shell I love these little brass rivets here for holding the internal cable ties in uh, it's either brass or copper because it's just I've just nicked it with the paper I just don't think you'd see that these days anyway that aside I've done the two minutes with my rattle can so I'm just about ready to start painting So just a light covering, oh. just a little worried that I'm getting a reaction there. Okay so uh, this is the first application of the green paint. I've uh, already been over it with a bit more body filler as before, just filling in a few bits and pieces and also uh, rubbing it back down. This now has to harden. I'll take this down to about 600. Oh no, I've just spotted another little hole there. Oh, that's annoying. Right, so that's uh, cellulose putty to go in there. Um, or maybe a little bit of body filler, I don't know. Oh, in fact, I'm seeing one or two more bits now, but never mind. Um, but that's the process, so I just have to keep going. And then, uh, as I've shown before, when I did the... Um, oil tank in a previous video the methodology of uh, doing the paint but for now that's the headlight the new headlight shell all ready to go back on once I've finished the paint 